Welcome back, lords and ladies. If you've ever seen documentaries or played the game War Thunder, or any tank game for that matter, you might know that tanks have smoke grenades to block the view of the enemy from seeing your tank's specific location or to cover advancements on the battlefield. But what some of you may not know is that more modern smoke has a thermal blocking capability. So in today's video, we'll be focusing on how thermal smoke works and what some of the caveats are. Most modern tanks will have a thermal sight of some sort which will use infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye, to see the heat signature of tanks and other vehicles. This is very useful for spotting the enemy at night and in hard to see places, like behind shrubs, and at very long ranges in desert situations, foggy situations, or cloudy situations. Thermal smokes, or visual and infrared screening smoke, or VIRSS for short, can be used to block these thermal imaging devices and non-thermal devices, but they can come with some side effects. Now, there is a simple explanation. Thermal and non-thermal smoke screens are usually used by infantry to conceal their movement in areas of enemy fire. They can also be used by armoured fighting vehicles such as tanks to conceal a withdrawal. So on a basic level, VIRSS works by using small particles of metal or other materials within the smoke to create enough heat by burning the particles or reflecting the infrared to block the vehicle's heat behind. Some VIRSS can also be used to block the use of laser designators for certain anti-tank weapons. Now that we know the simple way in which they work, we can now move on to the more technical explanation of what particles are used and what types of chemicals are used to set off reactions that can cause the smoke to be generated. One type of chemical reaction is red or white phosphorus. While white phosphorus is pyrophoric, meaning it can be handled underwater safely, it isn't used in smoke grenades as often as red phosphorus, and is usually used in incendiary devices. Red phosphorus, however, is used in smoke grenades more often, as it is less likely to cause chemical burns and does not ignite spontaneously like white phosphorus. The L8 smoke grenade used on the Challenger 2 is an example of a smoke grenade that uses red phosphorus chemical for its thermal capability. This grenade creates a full cloud of smoke in around 2 seconds and can last up to 2 minutes. The burning of the red phosphorus particles generates more heat than the vehicles behind them, making the smoke screen appear on thermal imaging and hiding the vehicle behind. A second way of making thermal smoke is to add small particles of metals to normal non-thermal smoke to block the infrared spectrum. Micro pulverized flakes of brass and graphite are usually used in thermal smokes. These tiny particles block the infrared spectrum by reflecting heat. The graphite in some smokes can also disrupt or just even block laser designators as well. Having this capability on the battlefield to block laser and infrared weapons is a huge advantage and if used carefully and strategically can be very useful. A non-thermal smoke like zinc chloride can be equipped with the aforementioned particles to make it a thermal smoke. Okay, so you might be asking, but would it not be dangerous to breathe the smoking? Yeah, it, it can be. Some thermal smokes or even non-thermal smokes can be somewhat dangerous to breathe in, although some could be worse than others. Red phosphorus smoke can cause respiratory issues and coughing with moderate exposures but is not as bad as breathing in acidic smokes like the zinc chloride mentioned earlier. Zinc chloride smoke has hydrochloric acid present which absorbs the moisture in the air which helps to create the smoke. Breathing this type of smoke in can be very dangerous in high amounts and is therefore recommended to use respiratory equipment when handling this type of smoke. And what about exhaust smoke or ESS? And yes, this does generate a lot of smoke, but the smoke is generated using diesel and exhaust gases, so it does not block thermal imaging devices, as it does not have any burning or metal particles in it to prevent the infrared from getting through. So ESS is invisible on thermal devices. ESS is mainly used for the visible spectrum of light and blocking natural vision. So to summarise what we learned today, smokes can be dangerous to breathe in, don't breathe them in, use equipment when using them, most tanks come with air filters though, so this shouldn't be a problem. They use small particles that either burn or reflect the infrared, so the infrared cannot get through the smoke, so the smoke appears on the infrared screens. And you can create infrared smoke by adding these particles into non-infrared smoke. 
Anyway, I thank you all for watching a short video today on how thermal smoke works, but I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something today. If you did learn something today, why not share this video with more people so they can learn the ones of modern technology and science. Also, don't forget to check out the Twitch channel for War Thunder and simulation streams, along with the Patreon page to support the content. Why not subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss another I Wonder video. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.